Good afternoon, everybody. Jeff Koppel, Realtor, General Contractor. And today's topic, I'm going to be both. I'm going to be Realtor and General Contractor. So put on the hat backwards. Had a closing uh, just closed uh, last week. And uh, the seller, or the, actually the buyer, took a little bit later possession of it. They had about a uh, week-long uh, lease back to the seller. And so they were moving stuff in the other day. And um, I actually was helping do a couple of things that a couple of repair things. Since I'm a general contractor, that's sometimes a service that I offer to my clients if, if you know, time permitting. So uh, I was over there the other day doing a few things, you know, helping them hang a flat screen TV, a couple shelves, that kind of thing. And they went to turn on the water and they didn't have any hot water. <clears throat> well, you know, happens all the time is whenever someone sells a house. They usually turn off utilities and then it's up to the buyer to get the new utilities set up in their name. Well, they did all that, but um, the appliances in the home, the furnace, the oven, the water heater, were all gas. So as a consequence, when you turn off the gas, the one appliance that still has a manual pilot light is the water heater. So, you know, the oven and the furnace have electronic igniters. So... You know, they basically control the gas coming on or not. So they're not an issue, but the water heater is. You have to do a, a manual relight of the pilot light in it. So I thought what I would do today is just talk about, you know, water heaters in general, both gas and electric, show you the differences between the two and some of the things that can go wrong. So I thought I'd go ahead and share my screen with you here. And what I'll do is I'll start off with gas water heaters since they're a little bit more complicated. And interestingly enough, when water heaters were first introduced to homes and businesses, they were gas. And as I go through this, you're going to see that gas, you know, water heater is quite a bit more complicated than electric water, water heater in terms of all the parts and things like that. So anyway, I thought I would start off with this image here. This is basically the side of a gas water heater. And I'll just kind of go through some of the anatomy here of a gas water heater. <clears throat> this is basically the control unit. This is what controls gas flow through the, through the water heater. This is an inspection cover that's been taken off of this area right here. So if you look at this, this is the main gas supply line that comes in from your, your utility company or propane if you happen to be on propane. Now, in a situation of a natural gas, the pressure of this gas flowing in here is about four and a half ounces of pressure. So it's not much pressure, but it doesn't take a lot of gas to pull up and cause a problem. So that's one reason that it's, uh, you know, reduced down to about four and a half ounces to reduce the likelihood of problems with gas from an explosion. Now, if we look at uh, the various pipes that come into this control unit here, if you see this one right here that's running vertical, that is from the thermal coupler. And I'll explain that in more detail later. This larger pipe here supplies the main burner setup. And then the smaller stainless steel line that you can see here that kind of snakes around this way. This is the gas supply for the pilot light. Okay. So then let's go down here. We can see the whole unit as it looks uh, underneath the water heater. So here we can see again that large pipe that feeds in here to the main burner unit. The, in this case, the smaller pipe that feeds over here to the pilot light. Here's the pilot light right here. And then also while I'm in here, let's show you here's an igniter. It's basically just a sparker. That's this little piece right here. And then this here is the magic the thermal coupler. Interesting thing about a thermal coupler is it's made out of two dissimilar metals. And when you heat up two dissimilar metals in close proximity to each other, it generates a small DC electric charge. And so that electric charge is what is used to basically control the valves within this control unit if that thermal coupler doesn't heat up within a certain period of time, normally 20 seconds, what will happen is the gas valves within here 
to the pilot light will shut off. And then you'll have to wait like 10 minutes or so for it to reset automatically. And again, remember, this is the old technology. This this stuff was all thought of, the thermocoupler and all that was all thought of back, you know, like 1900s, which always amazes me that they came up with that first. So anyway, that's this is an entire gas assembly underneath the gas water heater. Okay. And so basically what happened the other day uh, when I was at my client's house, you know, the gas was off. So I went ahead and bled the system and, you know, made sure I had gas coming, coming to the unit here. But then you see this wire here. This is actually to a sparker. This is a, basically a push button up here that you would push and, and that ignites the gas by the pilot. Well, that spark, that sparker wasn't working anymore. It was broken. It wasn't kicking out a spark. So the way I actually lit the pilot was by removing this little inspection window here, taking the glass out. And then I had uh, basically a barbecue lighter that I stuck in here far enough to where it was right above the pilot. And then I was able to light the pilot light. So if we want to see what that looks like, here's basically what that operation looks like. Here is the barbecue lighter coming in right here. And this little blue flame right here is the pilot light. So if you notice that little blue flame is touching the thermocoupler here. And basically, as that thermocoupler heats up, it kicks a small electric charge up this line to the main control box main control box here. You can see where it comes in right here. And as long as it receives an electrical charge on these gas valves inside, gas will continue to flow. So let's go on down here. Now here's a modern control unit. And now one thing that they've done that is kind of a cool safety feature now, since there is a little bit of a DC charge that comes up from that thermocoupler, now they have a little computer in here that can ignite or light up this LED to indicate the condition of what's going on within the water heater. So I don't know if you can read this up here, but it says normal operation. This is like one flash. It'll flash once, you know, like every two seconds or so. So that's a really neat feature. Just to, at a glance, you can tell if your pilot light is still lit. So what this unit looks like, this is it turned sideways. So you can see that this part of the unit goes into the water tank on a gas water heater. And this right here is basically a mercury switch that as it heats up, gets up to water temperature, wherever your thermostat's set, it will turn off the flow to the main burner, you know, so it quits heating the water. So anyway, again, this is old technology. This is, uh, you know, 100, 120 years old technology. That's just in a little bit different form. Hasn't changed much other than just, you know, introduction of a little computer chip and a status light now. Okay. So that's basically a gas water heater. Now let's take a look at the differences between a gas and electric water heater. And if you see here, here's that control valve outside of a gas water heater and the burner assembly underneath here. Now with an electric water heater, it basically just has one or two, you know, uh, heating elements. And that's these right here inside of the tank. And on outside of the tank is the thermostat for each of the heating elements. Now, what usually happens uh, in a house with an electric water heater. Sometimes I'll get a phone call from the homeowner and say, man, I just don't have that much hot water in the house. It's really, you know, it really never gets that warm. So what happens a lot of times is when utilities are shut off, uh, normally one of the utilities is water. And say you've got some people in there doing some repairs prior to when you move in. Uh, say the water's back or the water's off and you might have some trades and they're just doing a few things where they need a little bit of water, a little bit of masonry touch up or something like that. 
Okay, if they have it on the hot water valve open, there's a good chance that they're gonna drain that tank down past one or both of these heating elements. Now remember, your electricity is off at this point, right? So they're just doing some, maybe some stuff in the in the yard where they're, you know, just getting water out of the kitchen sink and or anything. I mean, it could be anything. Uh, but anyway, just say the water gets drained down in this hot water tank. Now, what happens when these heating elements are exposed to air and electricity is turned on to them? These things, you can hear them. They, they sound like a shotgun blast when they when they break. And basically, here's here's what they look like inside the tank. What usually happens is they explode right here at the bend because that gets superheated. It's not being cooled off by the by the water around it, so it'll just blow up. So basically, there's no continuity. There's no electricity flowing through this thing anymore. So as a consequence, it's not heating anymore. Now, the only disadvantage of this, one of these, if one of these goes out, you know, usually when you figure it out is after you turn the water back on and now the tank is completely full. In order to change these, you've got to drain the tank. So that's that's the one uh, one disadvantage to electric water heater. Whereas the only time you have to drain the tank on a gas heater is if you need to replace this control unit right here. All this stuff is underneath the water tank and can be, you know, taken out and replaced without having to drain the tank. So anyway, um, I hope that gives you some information that you didn't know before. And like I said, in this case, um, since I understood how to, you know, relight a gas water heater, um, my client was able to just ask me how to do it. And I was able to fix it for him right there. So that's one of the advantages of working with a realtor that has contractor experience. Um, but I would love to, uh, you know, answer any other questions you guys might have. You can submit your questions or requests for videos to jeffkoppel at gmail.com. And if you would like to work with a realtor that has extensive experience with construction and how to repair things around your house, um, how to negotiate uh, for repairs with your seller before you buy a house, or if you're a seller and, and you want to present your property in the, the best fashion for, you know, the most potential buyers to be interested in, I can definitely help you on that side as well. So again, just contact me at jeffkoppel at gmail.com. And I would be glad to create new videos for your questions you might have or work with you as a realtor. I hope you enjoy this and see you on the next one.